anyway, I partner up with this guy. We develop a podcast and it's going great. And then the, the pandemic hits. That actually ended up being a good thing for our podcast because originally we were going to shut it down. I thought that was, that was it. It's over. And I thought, damn, man, this sucks. That guy, you know, I never talked about it on my channel, but that guy sent me a cease and desist after my interview. There's something going on with those subreddits, dude. They're not run by normal people like me and you running it, dude. There's something going on with them. Like they, they are literally controlling the post and what goes out and the comment and controlling an actual narrative um, to, on what information you can see popular subreddits have told me specifically to me hey man i don't know what's going on but you have a task force of bots trying to take you out nobody knows that's why we're all normal people just want to find out what is going on right that, that's why the whole david grush thing frustrates me it's like dude he's giving you places and names just go there tell us it's bullshit or not i don't want this to sound controversial but people have no clue what i'm looking at look like um, I didn't know if I was going to talk about this, but fuck it. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. This episode is a bit of an experiment for me and my channel. I'm exploring new formats to bring you more enjoyable and engaging content. This episode is a pre-recorded one-on-one -on -one conversation with Patrick Scott Armstrong, the host of the very popular and up-and-coming podcast, Vetted. Vetted is a podcast that releases episodes every single day covering the topic of UFOs, catering to both skeptics and believers. It's exploding in subs and it has quickly become one of my favorite daily must-see shows online. In this episode, we discuss the UFO disclosure movement, um, Patrick's beginnings in podcasting, chaos in the UFO community, and much more. There were so many questions on my list that I didn't get a chance to ask Patrick. Uh, we just ran out of time. Perhaps there'll be a part two someday, uh, but I hope you will enjoy this conversation as much as I did with Patrick Scott Armstrong. Thank you very much for joining me, Patrick. I really appreciate you taking the time. I've really been enjoying your channel. Like I joined, I, I sort of joined you like maybe what, you were probably at about 4,000 subs, which wasn't very long ago, right? You've, you've, you've gone from like that to, but what are you at 11 and a half now in, in the space of just the last month really, isn't it? How, how, how do you, how are you finding all of that? Like, cause you're not, you're not really, this isn't your first podcast, is it? Uh, no, no, it's not. Um, yeah, man. Enjoying the growth. Um, um, yeah, just thankful people are tuning in and want to see what's going on. Yeah, it's it's uh, been exciting. I, I don't really pay attention too much to like the subscribers. Um, I mean, I do, but I don't like I just focus on making the videos and whatever comes will come from it. Um, you know, I worked in restaurants a long time. And that's like the approach you have to have when you're making food. Um, you just focus on the dish in front of you, get it out. And yeah. the rest will will take care of itself. So I think that's really the key. I just grind hard man i work hard and um you do you do work whatever whatever comes uh comes you know um and so yes i'm grateful to anyone um and if anyone's watching that's a new subscriber to vetted thank you so much um again anyone willing to like take time out of their day and you know give it to me but in the in the in the you know what i mean is by watching a video right by giving me their time there's i mean i i've just so grateful for that because the you know time is something you can't get back it's so valuable so that that's something i appreciate from someone more than anything is their time so well yeah. you you're great at doing you're great at forming the uh storyline and the hook of the i don't know how you're doing it it's, i've got this list of questions here and i want to say um yeah. i didn't have any specific agenda when i was inviting you on it's just that um i wanted to have you do to daniel and, well, I know you do. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, dude. I'm I just, kidding. <laughs> I, what I really just want to, because I spend a lot of time, like you say, watching your channel and um, you become like very quickly one of my favorite channels to watch that I just sort of must see Thanks, every day. Man. You know, there's, there's certain channels that, you, um, that you'll that you see, you'll check in on every now and then. And then there's certain channels that you you really must catch up on it if you've missed it. That's your, you, your channel's like right up there with the Y files for me, like... They're different wow, things. Wow, man, thank you so much. Sure. 
they're different things, but they're they're must sees. And um, I've uh, I've mentioned you on my channel before. I'm still not really sure exactly what my channel is, I, and um, I guess um, what I just wanted to have a great. I just want to have a chat with you because I thought you'd be fun to chat with about this sort of stuff. And um, yeah, this is this is I'm kind of experimenting with this new format um, where it's not live, and I have a, take a bit more time to edit it properly, and, and, and it's a bit more. Uh, it's a bit more sensible, like I'll weave in an intro and, and do all that sort of stuff. I'm thinking of changing the sure. name. It's all that sort of stuff that you do when you, because I, I haven't done this before. Like I've really only just started a few months back um, and I'm still only at about 200 or something like that at the moment. So, but it's 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 been fun and it's it's an interesting little journey. You said you're, where, where are you at exactly? I'm um, in Sydney, Australia. Sydney, so you're in, Australia. Yeah. Wow. So you're that in, is awesome. you're in Texas, right? Yeah, I'm in Texas, man. What what's um what time is it for you in Sydney right now? It's not too bad right now. It's seven a.m. Uh, on uh, what day? It's is seven it? a.m. for you. Yeah, on Saturday. Holy cow! Wait, it's two o'clock here. Holy, right, I didn't realize yeah. we're so far ahead. Yeah, Holy we're in the future, dude. man. You're literally in the future, bro. That is yeah. crazy. See, I I do all. I got of stock my... tips. Let me send you some. <laughs> I've got I I do all of my shows in US Eastern time. Well, that's when I'll release all my stuff anyway when I go live and sure. I try and aim for that target audience cuz my show is um I really love the United States like I think I'm I'm just really fascinated with it. I'd love to move there sure. one day. Um Oh, right on. And so the Have whole, you been here? Have you visited? Not yet. No, no, I haven't actually been yet. And so this, well, I mean, I've never been to Australia. I want to go so bad, man. When I lived in Europe, I met so many Australians. Um, Australians apparently they love to travel, dude. So like when I was backpacking, I, no matter where I was, there'd always be one Australian dude. Yeah. Or a chick or something that, you know, like uh, even in Mexico where I've backpacked, like same thing. Um Dude, Australians are the most, you guys are the most adventurous, like cool ass people, dude. I gotta say. So, um, from Some one of us text, are. I feel y'all are like kind of, I, I sense a lot of Texan in Australians when I meet them, like th this sort of Texas mentality. Maybe it's the heat. Or yeah. vice versa. <laughs> you know, maybe Texans have an Australian well, mentality. Maybe. Well, I, I, I like, I, 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 if there's any, the like out of the places that I would like to live, if I was to go to the United States, Texas is right near the top of the list, if not right at the top of Dude, the list. I've lived a lot of places, man. I've been to almost all 50 states. Um, Texas is awesome. It is the best place to live, in my opinion. Um, a lot of great cities. I lived in Austin for seven years. That's probably my favorite. It is my favorite city. And Period, that's, the, that's booming now, isn't it? Isn't it starting to really take I mean, up? it has been for, for yeah, it has been for a decade, man, or longer. Uh, it's been booming. Yeah, it's it's yeah. huge. It's, it's like a, it's a small, it has a small town feel, but it's a, it's a big city. Um, there's just nothing like it. Big river running through the middle. A lot of people outdoors. Just a very outdoorsy food, hippie, music, it looks cool. art. It just uh, looks it's fun. badass. Yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. coolest uh it's an amazing city. Um, yeah, Texas is cool, man. We'd we'd love to have you here if you ever. Yeah, and you know I've got me. a number of friends that I've connected uh, through doing this sort of thing and just being. Actually, I, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Actually, too much time. Uh, uh, but um, I've connected with some real great people, and I've managed to have some cool guests on so far. But um, and a lot of them are from the Dallas Fort Worth area and stuff like that. So I've got a plenty oh that of that's where I'm visit. at. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. In, I'm yeah, I'm in DFW. So some of the friends you've met online, they're in DFW too. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we call it. D you, and DFW. That's funny. You called it, you called it the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is very local thing to say. So good job, Look, You're already, uh, you're yes. already a Texan. Don't need to get starting to get with it. It'll take a while for the accent to catch on. Just say, just say DFW. You don't DFW. have to say Dallas Fort Worth area. Yeah, right. if you say DFW, they'll know right away. That all that's right, what that right, is. Right. That's what that means. Uh, yeah. No, don't get rid of the accent, dude. Are you kidding me? That would you'll that'll go a long <laughs> way here, bro. The 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 Americans love exotic accents here. Right. I've, that I've is noticed the truth. that. Uh, hundred percent, man. They're all about it. So don't lose that. Yes, yeah, the first um, thing people say when they come on my show. <laughs> oh, your accent. Yeah, they can't figure out if I'm uh, Australian or or New Zealand. But uh, 
Well, because we don't know. Man. Well, no, but we that's very similar. Here. They're very close. They're so close. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if I could tell the – maybe – Maybe. They say, yeah, their, their accent, that Kiwi accent is a little bit lazier than the Australian accent. They say butts and pieces. <laughs> they don't move their mouth as much. Butts and pieces okay. looks, That's looks funny. Even... It's like a Southern American accent, right? Like the New Zealand. Is that more? Uh, that's what the Southern accent is. It's slower. We got well, to draw. They're not, it's not, hey. yeah, no, it's not slower in that regard. I know what you're talking about. The Southern accent, it does have that slow sort of cadence to it, but, uh, no, they're just, it's literally the way they form the phonemes. It's like, instead of saying bit, they say but. Or instead, okay. instead of saying six, they say six. It's a sort of less mouth <laughs> effort. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a lot of nuance and I love nuance. So that's right. that's very cool. That's very cool, man. I did, uh, I did write a bunch of questions for you. I don't necessarily Let's go. know if we'll get through all of them because I, I, at some point, so I went a little bit crazy with the stuff. I just thought... Cause Better there's to so have more than right, not enough. Right. Well, there's so much to cover in this this sort of field of things, but I guess we'll go in and uh, I try to put it in some sort of logical order here. You do a UFO-related podcast, which is fascinating, and it's exploding in interest Every day I see it, there's 500, 600, 700 new subscribers. And um, it's it's been really cool to see take off. But you originally had a, another podcast called Lone Star Plate. And um, tell, tell us a little bit about that. What was Lone Star Plate about? And um, how long have you been doing podcasting? Yeah, man, great question. Um, I started podcasting in 2016 really because of joe rogan i just did it like on my own in my house you know nothing crazy you know i think the first podcast i ever recorded literally two people listened to it i recorded on my iphone with just like the old school like uh headphones you know with the mic like that i brought up to my mouth and and i just recorded my thoughts about the religion i think it was and that, and I love that. After I did that, I was like, this is cool. I, Cause I just love talking. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to make another podcast my own. I called it the Pat Down. And I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was running a food truck at the same time in Austin. So I didn't really dedicate that much time to it, but I would just interview like musician friends of mine. And we just talked music and that sort of stuff. And um, then I got this really big guy on. Um, it's like an Austin legend, music legend. His name is Bob Schneider. Google him. You'll love his music. Um, and I just messaged him on Twitter and he's like, yeah, man, I'll do your show. And I was like, really? Oh, shit. OK. Uh, cool. So he came over to my house and came into my garage and sat down and, and we did this great show. And then people told me afterwards that was the best interview of him that they had ever seen of that guy, Bob Schneider. And I was like, OK, maybe maybe there's something to this here. Well, then, you know, fast forward a little bit of time as I'm sort of shutting down my I had my food truck and catering business. And I got into a um, I got into a chef program in Austin at a restaurant owned by Aaron Franklin and Tyson Cole. Uh, if you Google them, you'll see who they are. Uh, they're huge names in the food industry. Um, you know, James Beard award winning chefs. And I was going to run one of the restaurants. Um, but then I quickly realized that this is, this is just not for me. I'd been in the food industry for such a long time. You know, it took me all over the, uh, all over the world, it took me to three different countries. I got to, you know, experience a lot of things. It was very cool, but I just realized this is not for me, man. I'm dying doing this work. Cause anyone that's worked in restaurants knows, you work a lot of hours. It's yeah, a lot I've, of lived work. With, it's just... I've lived with I've lived with chefs. Um, in fact, like a very he had uh, he was the head chef at this uh, hotel, um, and he'd he'd been he traveled the world with it, and he was describing a lot of the grueling hours and the environment as well. So it can be like kind of kind of intense and rough at times. Um, he would always talk about people punching on and shit like that. It was it was. Uh, he, yeah, but he was he was in fine dining. It was not like he was in just like any old sort of thing. And um, 
but yeah, I've heard that it can be very, very grueling. Is that what it, what, what was exactly was it that is that it was just too intense, the hours and the, the, the slog, was it just too hard? Not too hard, but like just too, too, what was it exactly that was, um, was like, no, 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 this isn't for me. Yeah, man. I mean, exactly what you just said, like the, you know, the hours, the grueling, um, it's really just more the hours than anything. Um, the environment, I mean, if you work normal 40 hours, you wouldn't really care about the environment. Um, I quite enjoy talking shit and roasting and, um, uh, that's what a kitchen environment is. So I, that's cool for me. Um, it's more just, yeah, the grueling hours. And, um, I also worked fine dining, um, and it is a different game. So he's right. Um, it, it's a, it's a, the pressure is, every day is a super bowl right. and uh there's just there's just nothing like that um now granted there's a big part of it that i like about that i i like pressure i like hey this is important we need to do this right i'm like i don't run away i raise my hand and say give me that i like pressure i like you know being put on the spot to do something that uh is important i actually like that pressure in fact when that's not there i don't do well well, it brings a sense of I, achievement I need, upwards, doesn't it? I, I, yeah, I like, I like taking on a challenge. So, but anyway, you know, that was just hitting me, and I just realized this is not for me. And I, um, I found a, um, a guy out of London, his name is Sebastian Sauerborn, and he was doing creative stuff and trying to get into podcasting as well. And so we just sort of partnered up. And he brought the financing side and I brought my skills, you know, whatever, my my somewhat skills. Um, Have you had any media we, training? Sorry, I've interrupted. I, that's okay. Um, yes, I have. I, I went to a radio broadcasting school for a year, so I was going to be like a radio host. I uh, figured you might have had 20s. some training. Yeah, because you sound very yeah, good. I was in orator. I was in film, too. For Like, I tried to be an actor for a couple of years, you know, and I lived up in Philadelphia. Um, but yeah, I, I had radio training. I was going to do that, but the money is shit. Radio is dead. Yeah. Uh, nice. at least, you know, whatever. So anyway, I partner up with this guy and, um, we develop a podcast, um, centered around food, right? Cause I'm a chef. So we're going to do this podcast around food. It's called Lone Star Plate. And we record a few episodes and it's going great. And then the, the pandemic hits. Right. And it was like, oh, no, we're toast because we did in-person podcasts eating food. Imagine mm -hmm. like that's <laughs> and the pandemic hits. So yeah, that really put the brakes. That on was disappointing. But it actually, oddly enough, and I know it, it, it's a lot easier to say now than during the pandemic, but that actually ended up being a good thing for our podcast because originally we were going to shut it down thought that was that was it it's over and i thought damn man this sucks but we decided to do it over zoom like this um and that actually opened the doors to be able to have just anybody on at any time because people were at home you know could do an interview very quickly over zoom and their own thing it was just easier you know so that just blew open the doors and we just started getting celebrities on like we switched to getting celebrities on texas celebrities and it just it took off in a small way, not like vetted or anything, but we were doing well in Texas. People were listening more than watching on YouTube, I would say. Right. But, you know, um, and yeah, that, that, I mean, we still have the podcast up, you know, I still will do interviews intermittently, but it's, it's pretty much done. Uh, but there's a whole catalog on there. I recommend anybody go check it out. There's well over you know, 250 episodes or more probably of different interviews with, you know, I mean, you name it, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, authors, actors, directors, scientists, um, Olympic athletes, you know, football players, singers, songwriters, you know, poets, uh, politicians, um, business owners like everything and it just like a joe it was very much in the sense of of joe rogan we just had anybody that i found interesting uh we would have on and, and i'd get to talk to him i met a lot of cool people i made a lot of great friends to be honest with you through right. that yeah yeah um 
you know, meeting great people who were able to help me, you know, in a lot of different ways as well. And yeah, and and a few of the topics we covered one time was UFOs. I noticed um, on that. Lone Star Play. And I kind of got into it a little bit. I even went to like Area 51. I filmed a video out there, but it was more kind of like goofy. Like I, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know what I mean? I really wasn't. I was just on a surface level into this topic at that point. Sure. Just like mo most people. <laughs> but when I interviewed James Fox about moment of contact, um, that, that, that really piqued my interest, man. That, that made me say, you know what? I, I want to do a whole, like Sebastian and I spoke, we're like, we, I want to do a whole podcast dedicated to this. You know, so we started developing um, the show um, after that, pretty much like last year around January ish. Started developing the show, trying to figure out what it was going to be. And it launched our first, you know, video in the middle of June of this past year. Um, what, and, it, and it started off way different than how it runs now. I wasn't doing daily videos. I was doing highly edited, produced content from interviews I had done. I'd interviewed Avi Loeb, Nick Pope, Mick West. And the idea was to then create these episodes based around their interviews where I would weave in different things, right? If they talked about, if they brought something up, okay, cut to a little segment about that, right? To give more context through the interview. Um, yeah, so we did that for a minute. And then sometime around August, Sebastian said to me, hey man, why don't you do daily videos? Now, granted, Sebastian doesn't tell me what to do on the videos. Like, hey, talk about this. I, I get, I do whatever I want. And I get, to, I say what I want. I do what I want. Um, and that's the whole idea behind it, right? It's like, I, I, I trust you. So just go for it. Right. Um, so yeah, I started doing the daily videos and, um, not till recently, you know, like you said, a month, month and a half, it really just took off. Really. The last month has just been insane. Right. It, it, I really, think it, was, it really just, I saw on off. Social Blade, I think it was six, six and a half thousand new subs just in the last 30 days. And it's probably gone up since I looked at it because that was yesterday. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. No, it's been it's been great. Um, um, the growth is is strong. And again, I appreciate every each and every person that has subscribed, uh, including yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're welcome. Um, it's sort of something, yeah, and they say, you know, and now as I'm trying to find my feet, I'm wondering, do I pivot into that sort of niche as well? Because it's something that I've always been fascinated with. Although, I'm I've become so staunchly skeptical, like like lately. Um, sure. It's interesting you mentioned um, Nick Pope, uh, Nick Pope, and Mick West. I actually asked, did ask both of them to come on at some point. Um, can't remember when it was exactly. Um, Nick was very kind about it, but he couldn't make it because he was very busy, which he genuinely was. Mick was just not interested, <laughs> but that's fine. That's fair enough. Um, well, just remember, man, don't don't take those kind of things personally. No, right? I think Sometimes it was more people the way. are are just busy. They may yeah. look at your channel and go, "You don't have enough growth for me to come on." Does that make Correct. sense? And that's yeah. okay. That, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's part. That's part of it. You have almost have to earn it a little bit too, right? Definitely. Because imagine if they just said yes to everyone that invited them on a podcast, like they'd be screwed. Hundred percent. It was a real shot so, in the dark. It was just like, should I? I just yeah. Like, ah, just do it. Yeah. Uh, just don't uh, take it personal. I'll you know? ask him it's again. Like, I guarantee it's not. Oh, not at all. I still follow all their stuff, um, and um, I really enjoy Mick West content actually. Um, I, I do. I watch his stuff a lot and um, I perhaps will approach him again in a different way when I'm at, say, like 10,000 <laughs> or something like that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but um, enough about me. Uh, you uh, you were featured in, I was just reading on your website, um, you were fe the Lone Star, I think it was the Lone Star Play website, that you were featured yeah. in the Travel and Leisure Magazine, the Austin Chronicle, the Austin Statesman, uh, Rolling Stone, you appeared on Fox, ABC, NBC, uh, all sorts of things. You've worked with Apple, Dell, eBay, Showtime Channel. 
uh, and the Recording Academy at the Grammys. And uh, you've been that's 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 a lot of stuff, man. What 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 sort of led you into that direct? That was obviously with the uh, the food stuff, right? Yeah, that was with my business called Boca. Um, anyone from Austin probably remember it. Um, started in 2014. And like I said, I ran that until I went to work for that one company before I started the podcasting. Um, and yeah, that's how I got all those opportunities. Most of them. Um, the, uh, I was featured in Travel and Leisure magazine back when I ran a wine bar um, called Dali um, in uh, downtown Dallas. And we were rated like one of the top three wine bars in the country. Uh, we had a just a phenomenal wine list. I, I became a sommelier first level. That's why we went to Spain. I did the Camino de Santiago. I studied wine and food right. and that that sort of stuff over there. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Boca, you know, doing that food truck and being in Austin. Yeah, it just brought a lot of opportunities, man. It just, you know, brought a lot of opportunities and people would cover your food truck or your, you know, if you're at an event. Um, and with South by, I hooked up with Showtime. So every year I would do their installations and provide all the food for that. So I had connections with the people at Showtime and then the recording Academy, they invited me to, um, cater their yearly Christmas party where they would celebrate all the Texas nominated artists oh, cool. every year. They, they had a special place. And, and so I did that for years. Um, shout out to Eric Jarvis, who was the president of the uh, recording Academy in the Texas. Uh, he hooked that up for me. Uh, I used to do music and he was my music producer. Nice. So he, uh, he, he, it just handshakes, bro. That that's how ha half the things happen. Um, is just who, you know, you know, networking and yeah. um, that sort of thing. So you yeah, you man, had a lot of, had a lot of great opportunities. So I'm very thankful for it. You said you made a lot of friends doing this podcasting stuff, and that's kind of the reason I wanted to do it too, to make a network and just have fun conversations and um, yeah. stuff like that. So Absolutely. yeah, like you say, the handshakes, the opportunities is who you know. It's not entirely who you know. You got to be, you know, have some merit. But well, yeah, he, he lot wouldn't have recommended options. me to to run that Grammy thing if he didn't think I could do it. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and he knew I would deliver and what does that do? That makes him look good. Right. Because then they're like, Oh, thank you for recommending Patrick. He did a great job. Thank you. Right. Absolutely. So yes, like you said, there's part of it there, but then you, you got to have the goods. You got to bring too. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You got to bring it. Yeah. So the Camino, there's uh, tell it. Can you just uh, for a, briefly tell us a little bit about that? And then I'll get into the UFOs and the podcast stuff. Cause that's what the main thing's about, but the Camino is the pilgrimage. Is it right? Is that? Yeah, man. Yeah, so, it's a pilgrimage. Um, I mean, it's a lot to get into, but basically okay. it's an old path of uh, St. James um, from the Bible that uh, he used to take um, to get to what was called Finisterra, which just means the end of the earth. So uh, the Atlantic Ocean on Spain, you know, where, where the border there, whatever. So you basically just walk across the entire country of Spain. Uh, but they have many paths, so you can come from different parts of Europe, and there's a lot of Caminos, basically. So I took the most popular one. It's called the Camino Frances, which just means the French Camino because I started on the French border. Right. And just walked all the way over. You just walk on foot. Um, you do you do whatever you want. Every, there's no rules. You just follow arrows that are painted on the side of buildings and in the road. And, th I mean, there's no, like, it's just do whatever you want. Best time of my life, man. That was the greatest thing ever. Met some really cool people, Australians, um, all kinds of cool people. Had great conversations. The arrow. So why you got the impacted, tattoo of the uh, arrow, right? Yeah, that's why I have this tattoo, which I can never show because I, I, my, my camera's I see backwards. There. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, man, look, uh, I recommend anybody if they can do something like that. It changed my life uh, for sure. Nice. Yeah, sounds interesting. Anyway, I'll move on to the uh, to the main topic. Uh, UFOs, aliens, man, let's go. That's what people want to hear, right? They don't want to hear about me, yeah, <laughs> about my history. Well, I just wanted to give gosh. a little. I wanted to get into a little bit of a background. Sure. I thought it might be interesting just to get to know you a little bit. The beginning. No, of... I get it. <clears throat> Excuse get me. It. For sure. Um, now, where I am hope I somebody found that interesting. If they if they didn't, just skip ahead. I will not be offended, y'all. Skip ahead <laughs> to the part you want to hear. Uh, no worries. All right. So the the UFO topic. What was the original hook? I think you mentioned it kind of earlier. But what was the real? What was the main 
can you point pointing it down to a specific story or, or event that it was that that pulled you right into this topic does it not necessarily from the podcasting perspective but just as a personal interest thing when did you start becoming curious about this i mean honestly i don't know um just kind of my whole life right, right. um the, the, i'm very much into like science fiction and in sci-fi movies and the future and i love things with like new tech and that sort of stuff i've been into that my whole life so I've always been sort of interested in UFOs and aliens and that sort of thing um, topically, um, just like anybody. You know, I, I never thought we were alone in the universe. So start there. Then the question becomes, OK, have have we been visited? And that's where the real question is to me, not are we alone in the universe? Because that to me, yeah, I just. I. I just think that's not obvious, but I think it's highly likely that we are just not right. alone. I just that that seems more unlikely than any scenario that that we would be all alone. But I agree. Um, and in fact, I'm doing this video uh, tomorrow that premieres um, about uh, panspermia, and I found out some really cool information that I did some digging on. And I can't wait to share it with everyone tomorrow. Because I expand on the Y Files episode, right? I was going to say more than just what did he, one yesterday. Even, yeah. yeah, even more than what he did. I, I found some other information that's, that's nice. awesome. I, I, I'm also a huge fan of the Y Files, and and shout out to AJ for coming when I did that video about the Y Files. AJ came to the channel and commented. Oh wow! Um, so that was really cool. Yeah, man. Surprisingly, a lot of people I've made videos about have then come and commented. That's cool. Um, that's great that you're you getting know. noticed like that. Yeah, I mean. Look, man, at the end of the day, it's it's I have no one else to thank but the people that watch the video that they, they sure. deserve all the credit, not not me. Well, um, you're doing a good job. It's the, it's the people that come and, and support the channel at the end of the day deserve um, all the credit. But yeah, man, I think just just being interested in, you know, and then hearing all these stories, right? The New York Times article comes out that definitely piqued my interest, like many people. Right. It was like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? This, like, so the New York Times one in 2017, you mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, that whole story. This is the one with piqued my interest. So for the viewers watching that, this is the one that uh, had that featured those three famous videos, the Go Fast, the Gimbal yeah, exactly. and the Tic Tac. Correct. And I'll get into Correct. those yeah. in a little bit. A-Tip, Luis Elizondo, you know, all that right. spread around those videos. I mean, that was nuts um, in a lot of ways. And yeah, that definitely just piqued my interest more than anything. And, you know, just watching little clips on YouTube, this, that, and the other, you know, you start watching. I remember seeing the Bob Lazar interview on Joe Rogan um, and always watch Joe Rogan and aliens and UFOs. That's yeah. like, was my favorite thing to do for a long time. Um, to, to be frank, like that is probably one of my favorite, most favorite discussions to have with my friends. Who, right who are not into this by the way like my friends are not into this stuff yeah i find um, it hard to find anyone who's into it but it is like you say a fascinating but they want to have a conversation. conversation yeah 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 man so that's like one of my favorite things to do is just speculate theorize here I, honestly i love hearing other people's perspectives um i know a lot of people in this community love to like shut out people and like, oh, mm. Mick West or this guy or that guy and F him. And then I, I don't do that, man. Look, the best way to learn is, brilliantly. To, is to keep uh, keep an open mind, right? Keep an open mind. Keep uh, um, hearing perspectives that you may not agree with or it's okay. And separating the person from, you know, what the reporting to some extent, you know, I, I, I can understand. But I don't know. Um, I think people should be very careful to not, you know, create an echo chamber around them where they only hear the things they agree with. Right. right? You, you don't feel free to go out and listen to things you don't agree with. It's okay to hear those things and, you know, check yourself and just hear different perspectives. You, you just don't know when you're going to learn something new and you're not going to learn anything new from hearing things you already think you know about. I and mean, let's be real, right? That, how are you going to learn anything new like that? um so yeah i find some of the um and i'll get into this in a little bit as well there's a whole section ahead on debunking i guess that i thought well 
I'd bring up. But um, I find some of the videos from Mick West and the Metabunk crowd, uh, some of the stuff that they do just as fascinating on you know yeah, sometimes like then the then the mysteries that they're that they're cracking you know that, that it brings it's fun i i like watching them crack the data it's it it, it brings a whole yeah. lot more um information to look at it's just it's fun it it, it it's um it gives you and it trains you on it, it sharpens you as a tool in terms of being able to discern in future what 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 to look for and what to sort of discard and, and things like that. So I, I really, I really find all aspects of the conversation interesting, although it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a, um, what, what should I call it? Uh, the, the UFO community, whatever that means. It's, it's a, it's a weird bunch. There is a, there can be a lot of savagery in there. <laughs> Um, tell me about it, brother. And you got look, no idea, man. <laughs> I've even been vicious at times. When I say vicious, I've been a little bit. Uh, sometimes I see like. Sometimes I get frustrated with some people and how gullible they are. <laughs> that that's that's one thing. But I got to check myself often because sometimes I'll be commenting and I find myself being a little bit too bitchy. I think there's this thing about being behind the computer keyboard that change. Like, it's it's it's. Well, of course, man. I, I have to stop and think, would I be saying this in person? Like often I would be because I'm just a confrontational bitch. But, uh, you know, it's... it's. Here's what I would... my here, Here's some advice here. So like, just remember, man, everyone's on a different rung on the ladder. So what you think is gullible, what does that even mean, right? Like you might right. be gullible about other things, right? Oh, of course. Everyone's on a different rung of like what they know, their experiences in life. Maybe they didn't have the education you had. Maybe they, th maybe they, that, maybe they're having a bad day. Like we don't know. Right. Right. So I never like to judge people on what they believe. Like I, that's what fascinates me about vetted and what I've learned and seen through the comments and across all the platforms that I post and, the hate, the vitriol, um, it's there, but there's more positivity than anything, to be honest. But there's right. definitely a lot of people just judging your opinion. That That's what's funny. Like, that, that's, again, it's just someone's opinion about something. Instead of, instead, like, I'll see embedded comments. Instead of people putting their opinion on the video that I made, they put their opinion of my opinion. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> I find that I find that fascinating, honestly, just from a psychological standpoint of right th 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 This is a funny thing. So there was this um, scientist who put up a post. Um, I don't remember her name, but she she said, anytime I need to help, I need help with a problem. I put it on Reddit. And at first I just used to put it and no one would comment. Right. She said, but then I, I figured out something. She said, I would log in with a second account. I would go in and comment the wrong answer to my post. And then people would then comment to correct oh, that person. And then that trap. got her the answer she needed because <laughs> oh, that's clever. what she learned is what she learned is people aren't interested in, in helping, but they are interested in Anything. teaching you like, you know, right. Like making sure, you know, you were wrong. Right. So, they want to be right. Right. So that's fast. Right. That's fascinating to me. And to be Little honest with you, I have, I have seen I have seen that exact same thing on my platforms. For, for Absolutely. Like that is true. Now, granted, engagement's engagement. I like that vetted is like a town square in the comments that people can just talk about anything. I don't delete comments. I don't really moderate it too much, to be honest with you. I, I believe in freedom of speech. Yeah. I believe. If you truly believe in freedom of speech, you have to protect the speech you hate the most. Right. Otherwise, you don't actually believe in free speech. You're you're just that's a lie. So I let people just say whatever they want. You know, they make fun of me. They make fun of my my hat. They make fun of my hair. They make fun of my beard. They make fun of the way I talk. My y'alls. They make fun of me <laughs> saying I don't know. Me me saying that's interesting, odd. Like, like I get made fun of in the weirdest way. Sometimes very clever, which can be very funny. Um, you know, but again, I don't mind let people, it's their opinion. It's their soapbox. It's their opportunity to state how they feel. And I don't know the background that those feelings are being filtered through. So I, I never judge it for, for what it is. You know, the only time I will step in is if someone is 
disruptive to the nature of. So if they come in and they type the same, if they post the same comment 50 times, right, dude, I, and that, I, believe it or not, I'm not exaggerating. That happens. People will, co they, they comment the same, con they just copy and paste it 50 times. You'd think and there so would I be have a to filter for that it. by now, right? I have to delete that sort of stuff. Like, hey, dude, come on, man. Or if I see them attacking other people, like going around, that's too much. It's a but lot. Feel free to it? leave your opinion. But to be fair, dude, that is so rare. Like so rare to be to be honest with you, um, that that instance. So, you know, um, yeah, I you know, openness. Let people just get out the feelings they have. I have a platform. I have a, a way to put out a video and say my thoughts, and people's comment is that that's their opportunity for their video, right? Is that comment? So I just let people go for it, man. I don't care. Let, let you, you know, say whatever you want, let it out. Right. Maybe it helps you, you know, the, all I, all I ask is that it's directed at me and not other people in the comments. I, I definitely, it bothers me when I see people being mean to each other, but as long as it doesn't cross any sort of crazy line, which again, I have not seen that yet. Um, I don't, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I also don't want, I don't want people to feel unsafe going to our comment section. But at the same time, I don't want it to be like regulated. Like I'm yeah. just not for that, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I like you know, that yeah. about your channel. You are just just straightforward. You know, bullshit. Um, and you you don't filter anything. Um, and I think that's yeah. this is part of your charm. I think this is why you're a you're a magnet for subscribers right now because of that. I think there's little of that sort of um authenticity in this space, really. Like there are degrees of it. But um, it's yeah. hard to find someone who's really kind of you, 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 for because for a long time I I would watch this sort of UFO stuff every single day, but then there came a point in time where I just checked out because I thought, uh, I just I'm not I don't these people are grifters they're not very genuine like well they're not maybe not entirely just like total con artists but it's just like you I don't like the shtick it's not. It's too fake. It's sure. regulated. It's yeah. But this is what I think why you're uniquely sort of popular at the moment, because you're not, you don't have all of that nonsense filter in the way, which is great. You're very polite though. You're very polite and you're, you're a gentleman about how you go about things. You, you, you but you, you ask the right questions. You, you call bullshit when it's bullshit. Um, or at least you question it. You, you hypothesize. Is yeah. this bullshit? Yeah. Um, exactly. You're very diplomatic about it. Um, yeah, man. Well, because I'm just a real person like you, right? Like just thinking about, it. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. Yeah. The, the, these are like you, right? And I think a lot of people can relate to what you just said, man, to be honest with you. I, I related to what you just said. Like, mm. man, you start watching these shows and, the, and it just seems weird. It seems off, right? Like, I get that, dude. Like, that's why I wanted Vetted to be different because... Again, I always stayed on my channel. I don't want secrets. Don't come to me with, you know, information. And like, that's what happens. The, the, all the UFO people, they, they become that. They become a magnet for give me information. And then I'll relay that to my viewers, right? And now I've set up this expectation that I've got to have information for my viewers to come. And what happens when the, when the well runs dry? You start making up stuff. You start exaggerating. You start the, and that's that's the UFO community in a nutshell. It's fascinating. And it is designed that. to help, you know, sift through all of that because most people don't have the time day to day. I do. This is my full time job, so I have the time to sift through podcasts, shows, tw Twitter feeds, Reddit posts, all the filter and try to present every day some interesting story that I think you know people could get behind or at least be interested um by but i think what you said man is 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 very relatable i think this show title vetted is very apt for what you do as well um like I, even... I worried about that title man i'm not gonna lie really yeah because i thought oh dude like one of my friends like first off let me just say that one of my favorite things to do in life is laugh okay i'm a huge laugher I love my, my friends and I just roast each other. Like we, you can't say one, you can't make one mistake around my friends. They, we all roast each other and I love it. I'm all about yeah. poking and just, you Me know, too. never taking ourselves too seriously, you know? Yeah. So when Vetted came out, my friends were like, Oh, I can see it now. You know, 
UFOs in in Alaska vetted, you know, with a stamp or something like some <laughs> corny sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like some corny. Uh, and I thought, oh, man, that's going to be the first thing people like roast me about. Um, and I see a few comments. If I make a mistake, aha, you got vetted, you know, <laughs> which, you know, what? it's all in good fun. I don't mind. Now I love the name. I love what it stands for. And I love that. Yeah, people can get behind it. Plus, it's just a easy, quick name to remember. That's also a part of it. Right. You know, it's the V is cool as well. It gives you the yeah. icon. It's great. And you're yeah, getting man. fan art now. I saw this fan art the other day, which is amazing. That's awesome that you're getting this recognition. I'm just really happy that, you, uh, you know, channels like yours are getting a lot of recognition because I, I sort of for a while was getting disappointed in the... Uh, like I say, I was getting disappointed in, and and I know, like you say, people had a different journeys with this stuff, but like there would, I, sometimes I think people will be believe just kind of anything, <laughs> which is why I see when the popularity of your channel takes off, it gives me a bit of hope. It's sort of like, okay, there are people that are like interested in actually asking the proper questions. Sorry, I've just... Oh, definitely, man. I think more than anything, honestly, you know... I don't want this to sound controversial, but there is a lot of bot activity right. on these sites and Reddit and YouTube and, you know, the dead and internet. I see it. I see everything, man. I see the analytics. I, people have no clue what I'm looking at. Like, you know, I can see. Yeah, man, I just I have behind the scenes sort of look and I, I go on other shows and I watch live streams and I see the I see people commenting in the live stream and then I'll see them over here and they're like two different people. Right. Like I see a lot of things happening that people just have no idea about. I've always debated, should I do a video on it? I don't know, maybe down the road. I also don't want to cause any chaos um, at the same time, but. Just I would take every comment you read you know online with a grain of salt like I, I, mm. it's hard to even trust if they're like real people yeah half the time the uh, dead internet's a real thing they think it's what yeah, is it yeah. what did they say it was as of 2016 or 2018 i think they were saying estimating about 80 percent. this was a quite a i don't know how reliable this number is but they were saying something like 60 80 to 80 percent of the internet is dead is not real um, of all internet traffic. I, I honestly, and... uh, I, 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 I wouldn't doubt, think about it. I wouldn't doubt that you, you it, companies can create 80%. it virtually, right? They can uh, create the traffic through bot. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's look like, um, I didn't know if I was going to talk about this, but fuck it. I'll just talk about it. Talk about whatever I, you I, want. Haven't talked, I, ha I haven't talked about this or said anything you know and I, it's not anything i'm going to bring up on my channel but i know for a fact because the moderators on these reddit subreddits um popular subreddits have told me specifically to me hey man i don't know what's going on but you have a task force of bots trying to take you out like really like i've never yeah and they're like i've never seen anything like it so the fact that my channel is growing is somewhat surprising because I've gotten so much information from people telling me that people are trying to shut me down, dude. I think there's some jealousy. They don't, they in don't that, like maybe. me. Yeah, this they is... don't like uh, what what's going on, you know, but, for whatever reason. Do you think maybe it's the? Do you think maybe it's because you're asking the right questions, or do you think it's because they're jealous that your channel is exploding? And in, in I don't know. To be to be honest, um, I don't really care. Yeah. And I don't feed it yeah. because, um, again, I, my only goal is to make sure I put out a good video every day at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Right. And if right. people subscribe, they subscribe. Thank you so much. If they like that, like, I can't control any of that. But what I'm not going to do is focus on those bots and the hate and the, and the make videos about because that's what they want in a way i think yeah. um I, I don't know it's like who's paying for this who's paying for these bots to come out and it's not just in one subreddit yeah and i'm asking the mods like dude what's going on like what they're like bro people are just they cannot stand you some and that is real people too they just it? don't like me um yeah man um there this, could be I a mean, little bit of jealousy could I be think... a little bit of i don't know dude i i 
I, well, a lot of the fruit cakes Whatever. come from Reddit. I think that's where all the fucking weirdos. Reddit do. is a cesspool, man. Yeah. I, I, I can't trust Reddit. I hate to say that. And that, any good Redditors that are out there, I'm sure, you know, you get lost amongst the mix of the trolls and the bots. They so, ban my fucking account. They won't let me, like, I've never been able to start a Reddit account. Like, every time I, uh, I don't even get get to post anything or anything just like five minutes after I start one. And I've never had one before. They ban it. That's so weird. And it's that happened like so three weird. or four times and I've I've messaged the help desk and they won't respond. It's almost like someone oh, it's almost it. like There's someone no who runs desk. it doesn't like me. <laughs> they know who I am. I mean, so. um you know, who knows? Um it's weird. It's I a weird know. place. I, but you um, can get very like uh conspiratorial about it, right? Um I, I'm not saying there's some you know movement to take vetted out that's not what i'm saying i'm just oh saying no i know but uh there's a proven i don't know this is what these mods are telling me i don't i i there honestly would be don't a know small if that's effort true to do it. there would be some In small fact, effort i just got asked by two subreddits to stop posting there because they were getting so much hate for me posting there and i was like y'all invited me to come post here that's crazy and they banned me um uh, one in particular um i'm, I'm not going to start drama so i'm not going to say the names but big ones and the stuff they uh, wrote to me was honestly i'm saving it for a rainy day in case i ever need to prove it or show receipts but the stuff they wrote me was so unprofessional and downright disgusting to be honest with you i thought what the fuck? you guys are mods running this I'm going to be honest. I'll tell you, listeners, I would not trust those Reddit subreddits for the UFOs, aliens, any of those. Anything UFO or alien related, they are controlled. Well, I'm... I have proof of it. Like they, they are literally controlling the post and what goes out and the comment and controlling an actual narrative um, to on what information you can see. That's crazy to me. I just I remember having conversations like, why are you guys doing this? Just you, let yeah. the information flow. Why are you trying to impede people getting this information? Like, I just that that, that it almost lends some credence to like the it, it's almost like the co intel or something. You know what I mean? Like, there's something co-intel. going on with those subreddits, dude. They're yeah. not run by normal people like me and you running it, dude. There's something going on with. Well, you them. think um, if there was co intel out there, that's where they would be playing. Right. absolutely that's where you would start um, yeah and uh, it's not the it first i've heard of sense. this kind of activity i've never been able no, to experience it myself because they won't Google fucking it. let me on <laughs> but there's uh articles thing. about it yeah 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 i mean i um and there's especially loony behavior with the ufo topic i mean i even just getting into to the youtube thing i only have like say 220 some subscribers i've got about 1300 yeah. followers on twitter uh, so just a very tiny following, but, um, when I first got into this, people were saying, look, the YouTube thing, the creator space is very cutthroat. Um, and just, you know, just don't trust anyone so easily, you know what I mean? And, um, that's what, so I've been getting told that quite a lot, but even like now, when I've started mentioning, cause I do all sorts of things like a bit of news here and a bit of like uh, trending topics here. And I've been fascinated with UFO stuff. And so I've brought that up several times. And um, because I've just mentioned it just a few occasions in my channel, people are starting to send me things and invite me on podcasts about uh, like on UFO podcasts and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I don't really have any special insight here. So I'm not really sure how helpful I could be other than be the skeptic and offer my opinions based on what this, the shit that I've seen over the last, you know, 15 years or whatever it is that I've been looking at. Cause I was on the internet early, man, like in the 1996 or something, 95, we got dial up and pretty much the first thing I ever looked up was UFOs and ghosts and paranormal stuff like that. <laughs> Have you ever had a UFO experience yourself or do you know of anyone close, anyone close to you has had a, a uh, an experience i i personally have not had um I, I personally have not seen anything i couldn't later than identify um so no I've, I've had no paranormal experience no religious experience no nothing i've never seen a ghost i never talked to god i've never seen a alien spaceship i've never seen an alien um 
I've tried. You yeah, know, I've tried. I've looked. I've seen. I've I've tried to pray. I've tried to talk to God. I've uh, you know I was a Baptist for a few years in my early twenties. Um, you know I've looked again. I went to Area Fifty One. I saw some crazy stuff out there. But then right. later on, when I went back and looked at the video footage, I was like, oh, it's a plane. I could see it. like <laughs> oh, oh, it's balloons. Oh, it like I could genuinely see it. Like it was no mystery. Right. Um. And in fact, I, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, I've never, um, do I know people close to me? Yeah, I, I do. I know people close to me that have had, um, an experience and it's real as day to them. You know, right. they just tell me, Patrick, dude, I'm telling you what I saw was nuts. Like this is, you know, it's like, is it, you know, I, that's what fascinates me about this more than anything is just the millions of people who have all these stories, like they're all lying. I mean that sounds crazy. Yeah, to me. it can't be that they're all lying. There's something definitely going on, and I mean, no matter where I sit on my skeptic versus believer sort of spectrum, let's say, I've always maintained that something. People are definitely seeing something. No, they're not lying, right? But there's something's going on. The government's hiding something. What it is, I don't oh, know. I can't. I can't sure. say beyond that. Obviously, for sure. But there, um, there's there's. There's, there's something, uh, uh, there's something creating all this smoke, like without a doubt. We and, have and sightings here. We have sightings here in Australia as well, um, but obviously we're yeah. spi- they're quite sparsely populated here. So, like, but there are people that live out in the dead center of Australia near a place called uh, Mount Zeal. It's actually the there's a town site called Alice Springs. You may have heard of that, and just outside of that is the United mm-hmm. States have one of them most important foreign bases called pine gap and um they use it for oh, like yeah. all of the wartime communications and stuff i've heard about pine gap right you've yeah, heard about pine gap yeah yeah so yeah. there's you UFO- art so there's a whole lot of ufo sightings and stuff around that area and there's also a really famous one that is um you may have heard of the westall school incident i think it was in the 70s i've actually been to westall it's in um, victoria I'm in New South Wales yeah. now, but I've, I have been there. There's not much in Westall. There's this, uh, like I say, the whole thing, the, we're a very sparsely populated country. So like the sightings are fewer, they're not as frequent, but um, yeah, the, 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 the Westall case was a, one of those ones that really, really challenges my skepticism. Like it, it's, I can't, there's, it's hard to poke really any holes in that. Like, when you you take a look at the, what the kids say versus what they are as adults, and they're saying the exact sort of the exact same stuff or the exact same details. Um, same thing happened in uh, Rua, the Ariel School in uh, in South Africa. Very similar case. Um, those school children cases, yeah, those they're the ones that I really have trouble poking any holes in. Yeah, yeah, they're fascinating, man. I mean, at some... the end of the day, we don't know. No, you know, we, we don't have any evidence. We don't, nobody has evidence. I mean, you talk to people who've been in this, you know, for 40 years. Yeah. Where, so it's like on a scale of one to 10, where are you on this? Right. It's like the same number since they started because there is no evidence out there. There's yeah. a lot of stories and there's stories of evidence and there's stories of, of proof, right. Of undeniable proof, the smoking gun, but there's only stories. So yeah. yeah, I find people's experiences and the the most fascinating. Probably, it's the closest thing to evidence we have. In in my opinion, is people's, you know, experiences, their stories of what what they want to tell. Would you consider yourself to be more of a skeptic or more of a believer? It's a it's a tough. It's I don't know if I should ask you that question in that way, but I'm not sure else how to ask that is yeah but what what side of the spectrum do you fall on because for me personally i i go between i i swap over and i can't decide i'm very flippant like that um so there's kind of two parts to this answer one is i kind of don't agree with labels in a lot of ways mm. so think of like politically in america there's a left and a right and and conservative and liberal like i hate all that i i I, right you know you want to know my position on something something ask me specifically that one thing because to try to just like box me in oh he's a liberal so he thinks this or oh he's a conservative so then he thinks this about everything 
So I don't like skeptic or believer either, but I realize that those terms are used in the community, right? So if right. I had to just play by those rules, I would say I'm neither because again, some days I wake up and I'm a little more this, some days I wake up and I'm a little more, Oh, so, you know, it's yeah. just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm neither. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm just a regular dude, man, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with all this UFO stuff. And I'm neither a skeptic nor a believer in the sense um, I can't say for certain that this is real. And, you know, the phenom I can't say for certain the phenomenon is real. I may think it's real, but I've always said this on my channel, at least I've tried to, is that I never want to rob myself of the actual moment of finding out that it's yeah. real. Right. right. That, that, that will be a very surreal moment. So I don't want to rob myself and just start thinking that way already. Yeah, it's real. And then you're living that life as if it's real. Does that make sense? So I don't want to rob yeah. myself of the moment. Like celebrating before you cross the finish line. I I you see the finish line. Like, I don't get that, right? That's a that's the number one rule. You 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 don't celebrate till you cross the finish line. Cause what happens? You'll lose the race. Right. Yeah. So I I just don't want to do that. So yeah, man, I mean, and but a skeptic as well. I don't you know, do I want to look at everything and just go, oh, that's balloons or birds? No. I'm not interested in that either, right? I'm not interested in denying everything um, right away. And again, I'm not saying all skeptics are like that or believers just believe everything, right? There's nuance to that as well. Sure. I think it's good to have both hats. Yeah. Right? If if Again, if you want to put labels on it, I prefer no labels. I'm just yeah. Patrick. I'm not a skeptic or a believer. Like, I don't want to be labeled in any way, which is what I think helps vetted in a lot of ways because I see in our comments – Again, to use the terms that are just used here, there are skeptics and believers in my comments together. Right. It's not, I don't ever want to create an echo chamber. I mean, just look at the video I put out yesterday, man, the hate I got from that. That's actually part of the reason I got banned from two of the subreddit. The Colbell one? That I put, yeah, the video that I put up yesterday because people were commenting like, I thought you were a fan of Corbell. How can you be saying that? I'm like, dude, you haven't even seen the video. And two, That's I'm not a fan of anybody. Like, I'm not friends with any of these people. I don't want to be friends with them. I have my own friends. I don't need more friends. Right. I don't care about getting access or interviews. So I'm going to speak my mind. And Jeremy Corbell has come to my comments and commented twice, letting me know, hey, man, I love that you speak your mind. So he's obviously cool with me criticizing him, which I respect. Yeah, be honest, right. Because, right, I respect that, to be honest with you, a lot. Because again, I'm not here to be friends with anybody like or gain access. People, oh, you're never going to get these guys on your channel. I don't care. I if thought I get it was them on funny. My channel. There were people commenting on that video before it had even premiered. So, because they just saw the title oh, and they happens. were like already arguing with you because, like, that they're happens like, they, every day. Well, it's just a title. It's not like you've seen what he hasn't made any conclusions. He's just, it's literally just I, a I mean, I title. Get, but uh, people I, I, are, I get where they're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, I do. They're, I, again, that, they're, people, but... they're allowed to have their opinion on it. And um, if they think it's click baity or whatever the term people like to use. I don't um, think it is at all. You no. know, honestly, I don't really care. Like people are allowed to have their opinion. If that's what they think, then that's what they think. I, how am I supposed to change their mind on it? Like, you know what I mean? I don't I don't care. You have to have a captain. Let them title. think it's click baity, <laughs> you know. Well, otherwise, the video again, doesn't work, right? Again, it's it's I don't I just it, they're allowed to have their opinion on it. So of if course. that's how they feel, then then I respect it and it's all good. And I I got to do what I got to do. Who, who's paying my it, bills? I just found it right? interesting like me, that people so. were willing to comment before oh, they'd even heard anything. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, again, that happens every day, man. And that's part of it. That's why I put the premiere like that so that people can jump in and start commenting. I mean, that video had a hundred comments before it even started. Yeah. You know, people yeah. are already, um, you know, on it, you know, I, again, I, I don't mind it. Um, but yeah, it is funny that people will, will it's make very amusing. I enjoy video, your comment section uh, a lot without seeing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm um, glad somebody does. In a recent episode, you went into claims by Ross Coulthard about it with a, uh, remember his, interview on the project unity podcast where he was saying to jay the host that there's 
they were talking about this this bill that would require this private aerospace to reveal all of their stuff within 300 days or 600 days something like that 300 and days, um yeah. and jay turned around to ross and said well yeah but doesn't that just give them 300 days to hide all their shit and uh, he says okay well what if they're so big that they can't be moved and that they're built in a that they're sorry they're located in a place outside the u.s uh and they're so big that there's a building over the top of them as some sort of structure on them over the top of them to conceal them um where do you think it is? Because <laughs> it's the moment he said this, the internet was like buzzing well with like, let's scour Google Maps. Have you ever done this whole thing of scout? I spent a lot of hours scouring just Google Maps before, just trying to find interesting stuff. And I have found interesting stuff. Um, but I think that sent all the Google Map hunters like wild. What? What? Do, are there any sort of locations that you think other than that, that um, that because you brought up the Reddit article about the was it an observatory in Chile, um, and yeah. it looks like it sort of fits a lot of the criteria of what it could of a location where this craft could be. This one specific one that Coulthard is talking about. But are there any other places where you think this thing could be? I mean, I have no idea, man. To be honest with you, I, I really. Uh... Didn't spend much time thinking about it, right? I, I'm being I think, honest. I mean, I've been sort of stuck on it to be on personally. I just been like, where would this thing be? Because I just, I, I yeah, I mean, it could be a million places, right? We're talking about Earth. Uh, yeah. there's a, a literally a bazillion, and I bet any place that you come you could think of is not the place it's going right. to be, right? Um, it could so. also be, it could also be. Bullshit. It could have been like Cointel, like that cool. Well, sure. Being fed. I mean, a hundred percent. We have no yeah. idea to know if, if that's real. But yeah, is that story fascinating? That the the they you know the UFO was so big they they couldn't move it, so they built a building around it. Yeah, yeah. that is a great story. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm I mean, past the making the video and like, you know, I don't really think about it too much past that point. Um, I'm almost focused on the next video you well know, you've got what, con- yeah because you're you're making content every single day so i guess you do have to yeah. sort of just like drop that and move along um which is which is interesting i, I mean i did it's just like um you know how far am i gonna get like am i gonna uncover where this ufo is at now and i no. think it's cool that people um take interest in that and then start like you did google you know going on google maps and uh, i personally that's I not found... my thing. I, I I wouldn't do it, but I like that people do that and go look for it. Like, yeah, I like stuff like that. Like, I like when the community gets together to try to do something like that. Like, that's when the community works its best. I really like that you brought up an example of where it could be. Like, it was just fascinating to go and well, I thought this is yeah. the criteria. It got the conversation totally. just moving again in my mind. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm just... It's like he said yeah. it again that day. And I'm like, oh, I really want to go looking on Google Maps again now. Sure. <laughs> I get it. I think that's cool. Yeah. I think that if it inspires people to do stuff like that, I think that's um, – I like things coming out, right? The, right. The, if people want to um, – and I've criticized Jeremy Corbell myself, but at the end of the day, he is putting out things for us to study, right? The jellyfish mm. UFO video, for instance. Like he got a lot of backlash for that, and I had my own criticisms about yeah. it. At the end of the day, he is putting out stuff for us to study. So thank you. Right. Like we it's something for us to look at and either not or that. Right. So I like um, I like that sort of stuff. I, By the I way, as, as we mentioned, these episodes and content from your channel, I will be putting cards in the video uh, and links down below. So whenever we bring something up, if I if I mention an episode of yours, it will be a uh, link down below and there'll be a card insert so that you can uh, go, right on. On, go to Patrick's channel and um, please subscribe join that community and um, have a look at what we're actually talking about. How do you come up with enough ter- enough material to do a video every single day? Cause I um, personally it's, I stress about just getting two or three sort of short little things out a week and getting a live stream together. Uh, I think that's kind of a lot of work for me already as it is. Cause I'm not used to doing it yet. I'm not used to the research. I'm getting there. I'm getting better at it, but um. 
what how do you what where do you go what's your main go-to's or are these trade secrets that you you can't answer <laughs> oh no man i'm a, i'm an open book um you know i take the mr beast approach which is i'm i'll answer any question i'll talk about it i'll talk about the secret sauce right like whatever's working for me i, I don't mind i i uh, rising tide rises all ships so i'm happy if, if somebody can learn from what i'm doing um to be honest i'm all about that so look th this is um this is what i do um i actually have way more videos to do than i have enough time for so you might think that's odd right you do one every day how do you come up with it? oh there's so much to do i promise that you don't run out of ideas but what i used to do is come up with an idea and make the video and then come up with the title and thumbnail afterwards right right but then i saw mr beast interview mr beast said what i do is i i envision the thumbnail first and then th the title right so that they match and then i make a video to deliver on that promise right and that's what i do that's i come cool. up with the with the title and thumbnail first of <laughs> of the story that i want to tell and then i deliver on that promise hopefully i do um that's why i i find it odd when people say you, you clickbait patrick i don't no literally, no you don't what, at all i i literally deliver on the thing that's in my title and thumbnail specifically Absolutely. and it's captivating that you. to me is 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 clickbait as if you didn't deliver like if i said that's jeremy right. corbell and then you clicked on it and i'm showing you cat videos that would be <laughs> clickbait to me uh, but anyway whatever again people allow their own opinions but that that's my process i i come up with it very simply that way I keep the title short, simple, use the least amount of words possible mm. to tell a story. And I focus my videos typically on one thing. Mm. So I notice a lot of other UFO channels, they'll have like, you know, UFO news roundup and they cover 10 stories, right? Right. And, you know, so what do you put on the title and thumbnail? It gets busy. It gets messy. It yeah. gets busy, right? So yeah. I just focus on one thing. Now, granted, I may give context to other things, Pat, you know, beyond it, right? That's and I source everything in my links or whatever. I try to stick to one thing in each video, and I try to make them timeless, meaning evergreen. If you if you click on this video four years from now, you can still watch it. Right, right, right. The evergreen videos, I think they call. You know them. what I mean? The, well, you've got the format very like it's it's tight. It's great. I think it's perfect. Um, like you said, I learned you, it, man. It it I, I tightened it up and I learned yeah. it and I and I, you know, understood more than anything. What I understood, man, is it's delivering on the promise that you're making to yeah. the person that's clicking on your video. Right? They see a title, they see a thumbnail. You better deliver on that promise. Now, do I? Am I perfect? No. Of course, I'm going to have some videos better than others, right? You know, sometimes people, you buried the lead, Patrick. You know, I, I didn't show the the thing until like 10 minutes into the video, you know, or whatever the thing is, uh, their criticism is. Um, so well, that's you know, I'm not good perfect. for retention anyway, they say. You, I mean, uh, you it know, depends. I, I, I try to typically deliver as quickly as I can. Um I make my intros as short and to the point as I can and get straight to the point of the video. Mm. And I I'll make sure to include my calls to action, right? Please mm. subscribe, like, comment. If you're a creator, you have to have those calls to actions. You, you, yeah. you, it, it just, it works. If I had all my daily videos and I never said that in them, I guarantee you that my likes, subscribers, and comments would be less. And only thing I would have changed is I just asked people to do it. And I genuinely want them to do it in the sense that I genuinely want people to comment. I will read them. I'm yeah. not lying. Like I'm, a, I'm authentic in that sense. Like I really want you to put your opinion down and I will take a look at it. Um, I don't respond in the comments because I have my own platform. So I'm not trying to make the comment section about me. And right. me getting in there and having, I want people to discuss amongst themselves. But the only time I really jump in is just here and there, right? If I clarify need to, or things, if there's, yeah, clarify yeah. something yeah. more customer service related in the sense that somebody might be confused. Or if I see something funny, or I don't know, sometimes I see a good comment, someone makes a good point, I write fair point. 
I mean, people make a lot of great points after yeah. my video where they bring up something I didn't think of. I mean, think about it. I'm one brain. All of a sudden in my comments, you've got a thousand brains. Oh, there's going to be putting, some smarty right? pants out there. Yeah. Gonna, so yeah. you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to learn. I, so I learn from our comment section. I, I do learn people um, turn me on to new dude. Every day people turn me on to new people, new events, new stories, knew something I didn't know about. And anyone telling you in the UFO community that they know it all, let's do I even need to state the rest? They clearly don't know it all. Um, so again, we're all on a different journey. We're all in a different rung on the ladder of how much we know, you know, and don't know and, and whatever. Um, so yes, uh, sorry, that was a long winded answer. No, that's uh, fine. You no, go but, ahead. But that's it. That's the process that, that is, you know, that is what I do. And then when I'm in the videos, I think something that I see people appreciating is, you, you know, you said people like the questions I ask. So someone asked me like, how, how do I come up with those questions? Because they thought I had them written down and then I'm fired. And I'm like, no, that's just in, my, in the moment. Well, in the, the moment, I'm just thinking of it. It's funny you I, say that. I, because when, as I'm watching your channel and you're going through the content, the exact you answer, you're asking the exact same questions that I would be in the totally. same in the same order and same time as I would be. <laughs> I'm like, That's oh, funny. he's taking the words out of my mouth. It's crazy. That's why That's I'm like, I've exactly. got to have him on. I'm not special. I'm not an expert. I'm not. I'm just like you. Mm. And, and most of the, and the thousands of people that watch the videos, like I'm just a regular dude who's those questions you're also having. Right. So yeah, that, that's it. And that's why sometimes I pause a little too much in the videos because I don't want to forget that thought I had. So I have to yeah. get it out and it's too much to write for me, well, but this is something I do that I think can help your viewers and anyone watching anything that has to do with UFOs. Right. Especially when someone's telling you a story. So do this. This is this is a trick that I that I implore. So what I do when someone's telling me a story, honestly, about anything, but let's keep it UFO related. I immediately in my mind start to imagine what they're telling me. So I'm going to start painting that picture of what they're telling me. Right. They're saying, OK, I'm driving down a highway and I see a light in the sky. OK, in my mind, I'm I'm picturing a highway and and what and now what's going to happen you're going to have all these blank spots in your picture because that person didn't give you all the details right so you see all these blank spots on the canvas so that's where my questions come from my questions just come from the blank spots in right. my mind i ask what the blank spots are and that's where the questions come from that's it it's that simple for me it's a very perfect uh, and anything, way of describing it actually yeah anything someone doesn't mention i have a question about Right. How did it smell? How did it look? That very nuanced, very detailed, mm. because I'm trying to imagine it in my the model. brain. Yeah. As a as a picture. So I wanted if you told me you strangled an alien and and jumped with him out the window, I've got a million questions. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like oh, it's like, uh, okay. So then in my mind, I picture, okay, a dude standing in his kitchen with an alien in front. Okay, so is there stuff on the dining room table? Is there what's on the wall what's you know what time of day is it what does it smell like what's the light coming in you know is there a doorway right there like how big is the house right like i just close my and just can think of a million questions i don't even ask all the questions i'm thinking to be honest with you it would the videos would be too long mm. um but that's my trick to coming up with all the questions that i do i chuckled the other day when i saw your email folder and you've mentioned this on your show um after the john stewart and Victor the alien guy um, and I'll put a, a card up above and a link below to that episode as well but um, after that episode you were saying don't you put this thing at the end of your as an email for you say uh, do not send anything you don't want shared publicly because you get sent like so much intense stuff now even with like 200 followers and only having mentioned ufos once or twice on my channel i even get sent weird stuff what is the craziest thing that you've been sent that you can talk about at least oh man or if you can't talk about it there. that's fine but i mean 
that's uh i don't want to be mean i won't say any names but man i have been sent the dumbest stuff ever i mean stuff that's just like really you think i'm gonna believe this like right and it worries me because again i'm not gonna call it any names but i've been sent stuff that is so ridiculous and then i'll see it on another podcast that they're talking about it and i'm like spreading no this is my oh, feeling yeah. a lot of the time this is how i feel a lot of the time bro it's it's honestly and even some of the shows that you know people i see like oh this is my favorite show i love going i'm just thinking in my head oh man you don't even know what that is happening to that show again <laughs> these people that reach out reach out to everybody so like I'm just an oddball in the UFO community, man. That's the bottom line. I'm an oddball. I don't play the, the same UFO game, which is uh, send me stuff. I have a special email set up for people to send stuff, right? That, that's yeah. that's every UFO. And they're trying to get all the interviews with all the biggest people, right? Um, Ross Coltard and, and Lou Elizondo. Let me get the... And I did the same thing. I get it. Um, and, and people need to have those interviews and those conversations, right? I'm not saying they don't need to happen. But I'm, that's just not me. I, I'm the daily video. I want to be free to criticize. And I think by becoming friends with them and that you start, you're going to not criticize them anymore. You're not going to hold their feet to the fire anymore. Try to keep them accountable because they're your friends. I see it all the yeah. time on Twitter. My good friend, Ross Coltart, joined me on the podcast today. Oh, so you think a real, I mean, what's happening now? You got like, you know what I mean? It, yeah. What kind of conversation is that really? Uh, and again, nothing against other creators. Creators should do whatever they want with their channel. It's their stuff. Do whatever you want. You have to put in the work. So clearly, you should do what you want. I'm just saying, for me, that didn't work. Having the access and you know, getting emails and and you know, this stuff. Because yeah, I have been sent stuff that's like, dude, pictures that that people are like, this is the smoking gun for aliens, and they're legitimate. And the picture is, I'm not joking. A picture of the sky with one pixel as a black <laughs> dot. And they're like, and I'm like, you're joking, right? Like, am I being trolled here? You cannot be serious. And they're asking me to share that on the channel, you know, and they're yeah. genuine. And I don't want to burst anybody's bubble. I People going out and getting videos and pictures and doing their own investigations and research, great. Have at it. I think that's awesome. But at the same time, like think a little bit, like, honestly, if I would have shared that, that person would have been laughed out. Like my co the right. comment section on Vetted would have, would have roasted them. Like uh, there's yeah. no way I would do that to somebody. So you I think it's also them. a responsibility of podcast, UFO podcasters and yeah. creators that makes sense. To, to be aware of that. Don't, don't screw over, you know, someone that like, understand that maybe they're not thinking clearly for themselves so help them uh, out by not sharing that for them like, kind of like it, when you just... watch if you watch like american idol or one of those fucking shows like you know those cringy talent shows on television and you see there's all these great artists out there and then there's excuse me then there's one that will go out there and the, the parents are in the audience and they're cheering them on and they just sound terrible. They sound like hideous. Yeah. And you think, oh, I see what's happened here. The producers are just fucking evil. And they just wanted to use yeah. this poor girl. And no one in yeah. her life told her. No one was honest with her. And yeah. she, they just said, you're shit. You can't do this. You sound like, you sound terrible. It's, right. I, I just think, well, you know, you need to be someone, someone close to these people needs to say something or at least to you know, hold it back. It reminded me of that a lot of what you just said. <laughs> you kind of got to save man. them that, from themselves. Yes, man. That's it in a nutshell. You know, dude, I had one guy send me, a, I don't know, 45 page report that he had made an investigation. Oh, wow. You know, uh, um, into the whole phenomena um, oh. with, again, evidence that was laughable. I mean, it's like, again, I think I'm being trolled. It's like, this can't, you cannot, this, there's no way you think this is real, dude. There's no way that you think this is actual, you know? So I don't know. I can't tell if it's people trolling or what they're doing. That seems like a long game troll to me, but 
Well, there are people yeah, that do long game trolls. This is like they're sure. they're, a, they're John definitely Stewart, a... right. Like uh, yeah. that whole story is 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 basically that. Um, yeah. Again, that guy. You know, I never talked about it on my channel, but that guy sent me a cease and desist after my interview. <laughs> and... He's so over the top. He's such like a big baby. Bro, it was uh... a joke. Um, he first of all it was all the grammar was atrocious it it wasn't even legally it's very funny um correct like it wasn't legal like he uh, it was to intimidate me <laughs> it was to intimidate me to pull down the interview and guess what i did nothing i didn't respond yeah. because i don't care dude i don't get into yeah. the drama i'm gone dude i'm not going to respond to him i just kept the video up and like are you joking right like get out of here dude but yeah. I know he's doing that to other podcasts and I see him going on other shows. Think about it. If he, if they don't, if they don't say what John wants him to say, he's going to send them a cease and desist. Right. And I'm then they'll fall for the it. They, they may uh, not know what's going on. Oh, bro. People let people on their podcast and just, I, I watch the interviews. The, the host never speaks. John yeah. just talks all the way through telling the story and there's no pushback. And now He's... you got homeboy going on cosmic road with another guy who John just fed him. I feel bad for that guy from cosmic road, man. He's getting used right now by John Stewart and some other people. He's just getting mm -hmm. used. And that guy's a genuine guy just trying to run a genuine show. And th right. that, that pisses me off, man, because he's just a genuine guy and he's has no idea that he's, you know, being played like this from these guys. And it, it yeah. bothers me, man. I don't like seeing people being manipulated by that because again, Jack is just a genuine guy. He wants to know what's going on with the truth. Do I agree with everything he says? Well, of course not. I don't agree with anything or, or everything that anyone says. I but personally, I, like... I, I don't want to see him being used and I see it on other channels, dude. I see other people. Yeah, yeah man. I feel bad for them, dude, to, to, to be honest. I, I yeah. Do. Yeah. I found it amusing that he made it on to Redacted twice. But, I mean, Clayton... See, Natalie Morris, she seems very quite sensible. Clayton seems to really be one to sort of buy anything. <laughs> well, let's I think about it. Um, I, I proved that they had the same information I had, and look how they told the story on Redacted. Exactly. Well, and also this, this, the, and I said it. Think about how many other again. stories on Redacted they do that with. The or one again, thing they that don't give you the full story. Yeah. Ex and so this is what I was, yeah, exactly. So it's sort of like this so called hidden um, secret airstrip that had weird geometric shapes. And this whistleblower, former Lockheed employee, and I'll end with this, uh, Clayton, he claims that the David Grush people have been killed to keep this secret. He was referring to this Lockheed JSOC firefight. This is a remarkable story. Uh, and also this whistleblower brought you photos um, of these of these runways, these Lockheed runways. Can we, let's just show these and explain. Well, you, could you even claim this is a runway we're about to look at? It's got geometric shapes on it. It's it's bizarre, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, well, let's show these. So we, how is this a runway? I mean, the the where do these, these photos came from know. this whistleblower? We don't know yes. the location of these these runways specifically, but yeah, there's geometric yeah. shapes right. here. I mean, so not a it's normal bizarre. landing zone, right? No, no, absolutely, abs absolutely bizarre. I, as an Australian, I'm not even American. I even recognize that airstrip, and I'm like, that's not secret. It's been around since the '90s, um, or at least imagery of it has been. It's the Helendale Lockheed Test Facility. It's got an interesting runway and a little thing on there where it sort of dips down and it's an interesting sort of concrete structure but it's all it's like it's not hard to find at all like the all you literally just do is type in Helendale runway and that exact same picture that they said that he got as top secret or like a leak from a whistleblower that was put out to three three and a half million subscribers and um no one questioned it it went all over twitter and I, I try going around putting out the fires and I'm like, there's, there's no point. There's no point. You're just going to sound like a wanker. No, dude, and... there's no point. Yeah. Uh, there's no point. You're just going to sound like, well, think about it. I, I don't and... go, 
I'm not going around to all John Stewart's interviews and going in the comments and like, here's my video on him. Check it out. Dude. It's like, dude, you just move on. Like, <laughs> yeah. if people are gonna believe it. People are gonna believe it. And if I think John's you did going it. to great try job to with take that. advantage of other podcast, then that's what he's going to do. You know, allegedly. Yeah. Um, I don't care. I mean, again, dude, I make a video every day. Like, I don't have too much time to invest in the in, drama. In, yeah, and in, in 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 one particular thing, I did my thing about John Stewart, and I'm done. Like, I'm on. Right. He'll never come on bedded again. Right. I, I won't cover any of his interviews. I won't cover anything related to him because I know it's BS. So why would I even? Um, put it on. And again, the only reason I did that interview is because he was in my comment section making claims. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Coming on to explain these claims. Um, and let me just say for anyone that watches that interview, I made a second post video, like discussing it, that interview. Right. And I do want to say that I do feel that I went too hard on him about the email thing. I agreed with people's feedback about that. And I, I already knew that when I put it out, you know, I'd watched it with a friend of mine and gone over it before I even put it out. So I knew that I had crossed, I I'd pushed a little too much there, but I left it in the interview because I could have edited that to make myself look perfect, but I didn't because that's not fair. Like to right. me, like, so I wanted to just put out the whole thing, good or bad. This, this is how it went. Uh, but I do want to say that I do feel that I, I pushed a little too much there. Um, but other than that, I think the interview was fine. Yeah. Um, and they'll be both linked so. below as well in the description of this video. Um, too many well, videos, guys, they're, they're going to watch. Um, well, there's, <laughs> it's like, it's worth watching. Watch them all. They're, 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 yeah. it's, cause they're a, it's a bingeable channel. Like you, you start on one and then you just go through and watch the rest. Like I was watching some hey, of the older ones. I never last heard night. that before. Yeah. Yeah. Thank they call you. it, it's the session time. It's good for the algorithm. Cause if you click onto one and then that leads you onto more, which is why they say the end screens oh, are very helpful. Yeah. So like, cause if someone sure. clicks on your end screen, it keeps you on your, that session time. It's like in the loop, right? Yeah. And yeah, then that, okay, that makes saying. the algorithm quite happy. And, um, there's that's only... good to hear so you think yeah. that it is is yeah, a chance, for... like you can just kind of go video after video for me i can yeah it's and i'm fairly fussy with that sort of thing like i do i do get annoyed with and i'm pretty adhd like i don't i can lose sort of <laughs> interest in stuff pretty quickly but yours sure. is just yeah, like the addiction is because you're just like it feels like i'm there asking you're asking all of my questions for me <laughs> you're like yes he's actually asking yeah, it. Yeah. the one guy he's not just leaving out he's not doing all of this mystique shit like there's that too but there's yeah the real genuine questions like you 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 don't take any of the curiosity away you leave all of that in and you also bring on top of it the the necessary questions that sound thinking people should have <laughs> And so it's, you don't sacrifice one for the other. And that's, I think a lot of people do. Correct. I think sometimes I do that. Like I'm at, sometimes I'll just be like, I, I complain a lot on Twitter. Like, this is all fake. This is a sire. <laughs> but I don't know. Sure. I just really I don't it. know. Like I just don't, don't actually know. Nobody does, man. Uh, yeah. Nobody knows. And I that's want the it to point. be true. Nobody I, has the answer. I really one want it to be true. One way or the true. other. So I'm with you. I mean, yeah. look at, yeah. You, oh, believe, you've got to, I want like, to believe. Yeah. You know, like, look, nobody knows the answer. So any skeptic saying it's this, and this is what's going, you don't know either. And any believer that's like, it's this, and that you don't know either. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows anyone claiming to know is BS to me. You don't know. And if they say, I know, okay, wh where's the evidence? They don't have it. No. And neither does a skeptic. No. That, again, well, that there's nobody knows that that's why, we're all normal people just want to find out what is going on, dude. Right. What's the just, saying? We just want to find out what the hell is going on. What they say is uh, follow those who seek the truth and run from those who have claimed to have found it. I think it's exactly. Um, yes, man. I, I agree with that. I never heard that. And I, I like that. Yeah. It's something I probably butchered it a little bit, but it's just it's basically that. Um, well, like, cause the, 
there has come a point if you, if there's a lot of people out there that don't have the they get lost in for what want of a better word a rabbit hole like the ashton forbes guy um and the mh370 because the mh370 was a case that i oh, that's a was, great example i was intensely close i was closely following that uh that case since it happened because um what had happened, I was just made redundant. I just lost my job like the day before it had happened. So I was at home. I was depressed. Oh, I was sorry, sitting man. in the I'm thing. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, that's all right. It's, it's just how it went. Like it was just, uh, it was years ago now. It doesn't matter. But I was just sitting there. I was depressed. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing's happened. So I had all this spare time all of a sudden. And I followed this thing intensely because it was a, supposedly it had, um, it had gone down in the ocean not too far away from Perth where I was living at the time in Western Australia. Oh, so, and oh, they wow. had, yeah. And they had the joint operations search center that was literally right next door to my apartment. So I was very like keenly interested in that whole thing. And so like, you're like knocking on like, you guys need any help? I can, I can, uh, you know, almost, what we all need actually uh, pretty um... much almost <laughs> like there was this crowd source. There was this crowd uh, source, like a satellite imagery thing where they were like, because there was so much satellite imagery, they were just looking for flotsam and stuff like that. They needed help. If, yeah, they needed yeah, help. Yeah. So I even joined sure. that. I spent hours just sure. scanning through empty ocean. And it was, yeah, it was a weird time anyway. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because like a lot of the details, because Ashton Forbes went into this thing after these regicide and on videos come up. I'll put a link to those below. There was these videos that came out and he thought that it got sucked into a wormhole or an endothermic event or some sort of thing. Now, as someone that's like just done even basic video editing, I can easily tell that that could have been re like recreated quite easily. It's been debunked several times. However, this guy yeah. managed to, because he's not a stupid fellow. Ashton Forbes is not dumb. Um, he's uh, He's got... No. He's he he fleshed out just such a intense investigation, and a lot of the details that he presented in his findings were correct. Like a lot of the small details about you know the the passengers that were on board the the the, the manifest that had um, two Iranian passengers on it, and there was uh, you know something dodgy about the photo. He all of the details that that I knew of, he basically uncovered um but then he didn't he just fell short of being able to just like appropriately tie things together like he just he he thought that he would build himself up with just this wealth of context and detail and once it was at that point it would become sort of i guess what i guess what's the word um impossible to deny his hypothesis or what he thinks was the actual reality of this thing. This video was real. Um, and I think a large part of it was just the fact that there was a second angle that took it from just being a sort of like, Oh, this is a fun little hoax video to like, Oh wow. The whole community, like there was, there's still people to this day, very intelligent people who I thought were very intelligent still do on Twitter, hundreds, thousands of them still following this case with Ashton and still believing that it really did happen as shown in the, despite all of the, the mountains of evidence that proves that it's fake. Um, that one second angle was just really all it took to set the fire. And I wonder going into this new age of deep fake and AI, how, like it's, we almost have to really learn how to think again. Like it's, it's so, cause that guy got lost. He like, he's, he's never coming back out of that. Like he, he, it would be hard for him to turn around now and say, oh, well I was wrong. Like it, that he could do that. I would do that if I was him, but, um, doesn't seem willing to do that. I don't see it. I don't envisage that, but, uh, it's just he's a great example on how you can just get so deeply lost in something and it was just like usually that stuff would be sort of done in private you would go through your rabbit hole sort of breakdown we all have that moment like i've been there i went i remember doing that when i went in dug into the rothschild stuff and, and all the money system and all that stuff but uh 
I had to pull myself out of it and go, whoa, like you're going crazy. You're getting cabin fever. You've got to snap out of it. Like things might seem crazy here and some of that's correct, but it's not all, it's not one big thing. It's not everything's tied to it. You know, like I know I'm rambling a bit here, but my, I guess my point is Ashton Forbes had a very public mental breakdown, I think, over what is could otherwise be described as just a very typical rabbit hole experience. What what you what people saw there was kind of what happens to anyone that gets locked into the conspiracy rabbit hole, like the Q QAnon stuff, all of that sort of stuff. Um I think that was, yeah, like a very interesting case study moving forward. I'm not sure if this is even a question or if it's just me talking about Ashton Forbes. What, what do you want to weigh in on that at all or on the, on the video and action forums. I mean, yeah. I, I made a video about it. Um, I personally think, I still think it, again, allegedly, I think Ashton is made the videos himself a long time ago. Like, I think he's behind the whole thing, if I'm being honest. Um, that was something I had thought of. Or he knows the of. people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it makes the most sense to me. Um, when like, you said again, that. Again, that's how he knows. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't interrupt you. I just spoke for all that whole time, and now I'm interrupting you again. But no, uh, when okay. you when you said that on your show, because now I'm remembering it as you say it, um, I I my mind exploded because I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Like I I <laughs> I was so annoyed that I didn't think of the fact that he was the hoaxer. So anyway, I'll let you continue. Sorry. Again, I'm not. Um, allegedly, that's just my opinion. I don't know that for certain. Um, but it makes the most sense. Um, think about it like that's the reason he was able to put up all this money for someone to prove it wrong because he knew it could never be he's the one with the fight, like he's the one. So he, right. he could never, no one could ever cash that money. Now, these other files came out and there was this other person and this, and they turned down the money, right? And all this stuff and Kim.com. Honestly, there's just so much. In my opinion, there was a lot of work put in to something that to me was pretty easily dismissible from the beginning. Right. But again, I'm not saying there's nothing dubious with the flight. Yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying those videos of this plane being teleported away. It, it just uh, oh, like that, yeah. to me just just didn't seem that much effort to be put into that seem odd the videos and were fake. why would I you mean, put in that kind of effort right yeah the, uh, because something... you created it and you want people to to get behind it right like so you 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 make the story and he, look he's just trying to find his you know his his position in the community mm -hmm. right because if you notice now he's he's pivoted so now yes the focus he... is he pulled a John Stewart. So basically what the idea is in UFO community is this is what you do. You make up a fake story. You bring it to the world. They go, people go, oh, no, it's BS. I don't think it's real. And then you're like, oh, yeah. And then you sort of give up on the fight. And then you pivot and you go, well, hey, how about this over here? And now everyone knows you, who you mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? So yeah, you yeah, found yeah. a way to elevate yourself above everyone else with a fake story. And you let it go. Yeah. So Ashton's still sort of post here and there about the MH370, but why isn't he all in on it still, right? Because why? I mean, it, to me, it seems pretty clear, but yeah, I think so. I ignore I think it, all right. of it. I don't care, you know, what he's doing. You know, everyone find like UAP Max. That's another guy that if, if they haven't heard of, like Mike Disclosure, John Stewart. You just you make this fake story up allegedly, and then you. Again, when that story gets blown up, you go, yeah, yeah, okay, that story. But hey, what about this? Let's work on this new project, right? And now, yeah. does that make sense? So now people know you, and that it's was John Stewart's way. Is good attention, apparently. Yeah, because that's what that's what John Stewart used to get in the door with other people, right? Hey, I'm working on this alien documentary, right? It sort of gives you like a project that you're working on. You can attach yourself to. Right. It's not going anywhere. Nothing's going to happen. It's made up. But now you can talk to other people and they're like, oh, you're the guy making the documentary. Does that make the sense? Last 17 years. And, yeah. But you're really not <laughs> making anything. Yeah, right. But it's again, it gives you clout or credibility 
it's a way to build up your credibility in the UFO community without anything, with with, yeah. with nothing. Um, and I see that a lot with a lot of people. And I think that was just Ashton. Ashton to me is the epitome of like Reddit as a person. Right. <laughs> if Reddit was a person, <laughs> yeah. it, that's Ashton Forbes. Yeah. Like, like that, that's it. That that's same temperament. That's, that's him. If that's... that's him as a person. <laughs> And whatever, um, you know, as you go through this community and you'll find the same thing, Daniel, as you start to grow your show and do more interviews, right, and, and network and that sort of thing, like, I mean, just like life, you find people you get along with and you don't and whatever. Yeah. I'm not here to bash or go after anybody. It's not like I've made a ton of Ashton Ford videos. I haven't. I've only made the, no, the only one made where I covered one about one him and the thing. And that's it. Yeah. Because I move on. Yeah. If I don't, if I don't really dig someone. Because I'll never use the word hate. That's a strong word for me. It's a lot. Yeah. But if I don't dig someone or what they're doing, I just ignore. I just move on. I just ignore them and move on. I have Ashton muted on Twitter. Like I, I don't. He unblocked a bunch of people. He did something and he unblocked and everything. Yeah, he uh, Dude, he, he followed me mute. for a while. Like, and I, then... I just, I just don't want to. I just don't care. Like he does whatever he wants. He 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 made his way into the community and. I care about the um the case and the fact that something very sinister happened there and that it's definitely been hit. Like the governments or the sort of intelligence community is definitely hiding something to do with that case. And I won't go into that any further, but yeah, I think that's possible, what is man. most, it's, it's that's possible. why it was so captivating to me and a lot of other people was because it, the case already sure. had so much mystery attached to it already without the those two videos. 100%. So, and yeah. look, let's be real. It also is a perfect example of people in this community are dying to put their effort and their energy behind something right. to look into. Absolutely. Right. And it's like a dog wagon for a bone and a bone came by. So of course people grabbed it. Yeah. This, this very enticing bone of the MH370, like you said, it had this whole other backstory, not just the videos. Mm. Like if it was just the videos alone, which to be fair, I still have not seen the proof that proves that the the plane in those videos is actually MH370. I still have not seen the evidence. I know people bring up the satellite and that none of that is definitive proof. Yeah. So again, that was part of the shtick to me was that everyone's just assuming that the plane in the video is MH370. So now you're gonna build this whole investigation based off of this one lie there was too many or leaks. unproven fact it was a leak does that make yeah. sense an yeah. unproven fact that that plane in the video is the actual plane that went missing that you need to prove that first before you start extrapolating everything else and and that to me was never proven so that's yeah. why that case just until you can prove to me that that is the without a doubt that that is a plane in the video then i'm not even going to take the video seriously right Forget yeah, he went down teleportation and orbs and several wrong turns you know. in that investigation. But um, and and whatever, I'm not here to judge um his investigating skills. I um, think he could again. Be, I yeah. I my opinion is he made it all up. He made yeah videos. yeah. He or he knows who did and I think that's that a was his way to get to the theory. Top. And I was very interested in that, hearing that. Yeah, I thought that was a great theory. Let's do the final questions then. What do you think disclosure looks like? Do you think we'll ever have it? Well, well, there's a lot to unpack there because we would have to define disclosure and having it. What does that mean, having it, mm -hmm. right? So I always look at disclosure in many forms. So think of it like a book. If I show you a book, without opening it, you can see the title. You can see maybe a picture on the front, but you don't have the whole story, right? But you can see the book. Now, if you open it up and you start reading and you have to read the whole thing, now you get a whole understanding of the entire story, right? So that's how I see disclosure. Potentially, we could get a, a glimpse of the title of the book, mm -hmm. but I don't know if we'd ever actually get inside the book, if you right. will. So that's why I promote the idea that I hope at least our government one day would just say, Hey, this is real. We can't tell you more about it. Great. I'm cool with that. 
right? That that's why the whole David Grush thing frustrates me. It's like, dude, he's giving you places and names. Just go there, tell us it's bullshit or not. Why won't our government? Why won't the U.S. government just go there and say, David Grush, we we, we checked the stuff you gave us, and it's it's our own tech, and we can't say any more about it. Just say right. that. Or we went. Oh shit, there's something going on here. You know, you know. Yeah. But that that is so dubious to me that they won't do that. So I don't know, man. I think it's not uh, that we top get are cleared or, everything. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dopser again is, and he, and David Grush has stated it himself. So to be fair to him, you know, um, it doesn't prove if anything's true or not. Yeah. Dopser has no, it, 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 it oh, you know, the fact that the validity cleared. of what goes through it doesn't mean anything right yeah so, the fact that it but was all clear. my money is on david grush dude like that's where my focus is as far as getting to disclosure is david grush and what he's trying to do i think that's the best bet at least for america yeah um, how would that affect globally and on australia and what's the australian where movement are the allies disclosure? So i don't help. know yeah you know um, yeah it would help i'm sure right um yeah uh, globally we were on the same team um personally i think he's co-intel but that's just me but um the Dopser approval to me it's possible. suggests that it isn't real. But um, that's just where I am at at the moment. I guess I'll with, end it yeah, with man. one last question. What is next for Vetted Podcast and um, your journey in exploring the unknown? Same thing I'm doing, man. Um, you know, a lot of people have subscribed and, and like we've stated here very recently, um, thousands of people are have subscribed and my goal is to deliver on the reason they subscribed absolutely and just keep doing that not not try to expand or do all this other weird content or all this other stuff you know people are people want to tune in to see the daily video and that's that's literally my focus is, is just doing that um so that's it man nothing not not going any anything crazy yeah we might add some uh we, we we have a new website we're launching and um i'm debating whether or not to do a patreon i just need to make sure that it has value and it's worth something because i'm not just out to get a patreon going like i need to make sure that what i provide to people is a value and that people see value in it and it means something because look, like, i'm just a regular guy who works hard and you know pays my bills and like i get those things like i'm not trying to manipulate anyone or or grift anyone or anything like that like it just needs to have value so um i'll probably put out some feelers on the channel and see where people are at with that and see what they would want to see from a patreon like what could i offer because again i don't have secret information right you're not coming to vetted because my new source has this new information don't forget to tune in tomorrow and i'm going to tell you this new information he just told me you're never going to get that from vetted so I don't know if people would just people join. Would be like, well, why are you doing a Patreon? People would join just for the literal extra five minutes. If you just did an extra five minutes a week, people would join and pay for that because it's not found elsewhere. That's interesting. So, yeah, let me ask you that. So I had thought about doing one like extra daily video a week, but it's for Patreon only. Yeah, people would pay for that. Does that I make would sense? pay like for that. One extra a week Yeah, and a monthly... Um, private live stream where we can all chat together yeah like and you this, can like, like what we're doing obviously like once a month everybody start it with like a low tier and just do start with the one extra thing and see how it goes and then if i just want one tier oh i i don't like patrons where i go and there's 35 different tiers i'm like bro what the fuck i don't even know what the fuck to do here like just give me one thing like yeah just give me one thing like five bucks a month this is what i get and that's it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I honestly you, don't want to have a bunch of tears. You could add stuff as it goes along. Just just see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Great, great, great advice, Daniel. But to be yeah, honest with you. To start with, just an extra advice. video would be worth the paying the money. I would do it. I'll be there. It's good to hear. Um, it's good to get feedback like this, like to yeah. hear uh, from you. Well, Patrick, it's been really so, great to talk to you. Thank you for chatting with me. I um, I, I know you've got to go now, but um, it'd be great to have you again sometime maybe when uh maybe when we see the big spaceship come to earth and 
we have the final <laughs> disclosure moment. We'll get together and chat again. Uh, that's how I'll come to Australia in a spaceship. Pick you up, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do this Hitchhiker's Guide style. No, man, thank you, Daniel, very much um, for reaching out, man. I wish you all the best with, you know, what you're trying to do. And I really Thanks, appreciate man. all the support you've shown for Vetted. And I've really enjoyed this conversation and um, just being able to talk and be free about it. Uh, you know, good luck with the editing and everything. And and I'm always here, man. So if you um, want to have another conversation, absolutely hit me up. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time here. So for those of y'all watching, listening, please hit that subscribe button for Daniel y'all and, and just comment down below of what you think of like our conversation. Was there something we brought up that you wish we'd have brought up? What do you see? What, what do you want to see Daniel doing in these interviews? Right. What, what do you want to see him? Who do you want to see him talking to? Um, comment that down below. I'm sure Daniel would love to, to read that and, and, and find that out. So yeah, man, thank you so much for, for just taking the time. Again, anyone that takes time with me, it, it means a lot. So oh, I appreciate you having me on your channel. And look, I've been where you're at. I'm still where you're at. I'm, I'm a small channel, dude. What, what, what I have is nothing. Like, but you are a real rising star. Day. I'm happy to see it too. I'm very happy to Maybe see it. Maybe so, but I, I've been where you're at and I've reached out to people to, to, you know, hey man, can you come on my podcast? So like, I want to try to be as open as I can with everyone and go on their podcast because I've also been reached out. Does that make sense? I've yeah. done that. I've been lucky. So I want to get back. Said, yeah, yeah. Been very lucky. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, no, you're great. You're great at this, man. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You have yourself a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you around the internet. <laughs> all right, brother. Let me know when this uh, when this goes up, and I'll give it a share. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel. You're welcome. Thanks, brother. All right, brother. Be good, down. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Peace. In the future. <laughs> peace. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up down below and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I really would like to do this again and I'd hope to see you there.